arms are sore. I don't know why. You didn't like my hmm? You didn't have Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I suck. I was talking to you the whole time. Candle in my hand. Doesn't seem dangerous at all. Okay, today is stretch and strength yoga. Uh, a little bit of stretch, a little bit of strength. We are working with the theme of contentment this week. So we are going to work towards standing split and a balancing standing split, but we're going to practice contentment along the way. So being content with where your body's at, where your body, what your body shape is, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, working with what you've got, being content with what you've got, and enjoying the journey along the way. So maybe you have goals of being longer in certain places, more open. Maybe you have goals of being stronger. And as you get towards those goals. We're gonna practice contentment with the journey. So it's great to have goals, but we need to enjoy the journey along the way. So, start down on our racks. <clears throat> landing on your mat, landing in this space, Starting to let go of anything that came before this moment and anything that's yet to come. Really landing on your mat. Maybe even imagining that your mat is like this little sacred room and there are walls around the mat. This is your space and nothing else exists for this moment in time. Just you, the mat, your breath, this physical body. Start to really connect with your breath. Maybe even slowing it down. We're going to work a lot with the legs today. So start to wiggle your feet. Start to feel your legs, move your legs around. Notice what is present. Maybe peeling the heels up, stretching the tops of the feet. Just starting to move your legs around. Notice what is present. Start to feel your legs, maybe opening up the knees, feeling inner thighs. Really starting to just connect to your legs. And then take the legs long with a soft bend in the knee and we're going to point the toes stretch the front of the feet and then pull the toes back so then we're going to start to try and feel the backs of the legs so without pushing the back of the knee down send the heel further away notice if you get any pulling in the low back so when we start to work with the backs of our legs point the toes push the toes away it's all connected. So sometimes the tightness that we think we have in the back of our net legs is not just the back of the legs. It might also be pull the toes back and push the heels away, start to work with the backs of the legs. Sometimes it's all connected into the glutes and the low back also. So push toes away, connect to the muscles of the leg. While your toes are pushed away, roll your thighs in. So feel like you're rolling the bone in your thigh in. Knees are gonna roll in, toes are gonna roll in. Engage, and then roll your bones out. And then bring your feet back to neutral. Soften your legs. 
And we're going to bring our feet down to the ground wherever our back is kind of comfortable, knees up. <clears throat> we're going to work a little with the low back here. So soft, slow, and with control. We're going to press the low back into the ground, a little soft tilt in the pelvis, and then pull it back. So push the back, lower back up, pelvis tilts the other way. So working slow, just start to move, rolling through the pelvis, and a little squeeze of the muscles. So no muscles being really, really intensely squeezed. As we do this, we're just trying to feel what is present in the low back, maybe in the glutes. Maybe you can press into the heels a little and feel what's going on from the heels all the way to the low back. Breathe as you're moving. <clears throat> and then bring your pelvis kind of neutral. Land your feet on the ground. Press your feet into the ground and then fire up the backs of the legs and the front of the stomach and pull the hips up, hold. So pulling the hips up while leaving the rib cage down. We're just working on low back, glutes, backs of the legs. Breathe and hold your hips up. And then we're gonna squeeze the glutes on really tight and then off. Tight and then off. Little squeeze. <laughs> I can't do that, I don't know why. <laughs> They won't go off. Okay, so imagine there's a block between your knees. And actually, if you have a block, you can place a block be between easy. your knees. It can help you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Squeeze. And then off. Oh. Sweet. So things to watch for. Watch for any tension coming into your neck. You only want to be working from the glutes down. You want to use the muscles in front of your hips to keep your hips stable. So a little squeeze, enough. It's not a huge movement. I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> See, very this sad. is why we use props. Props are helpful. Wait, it's still squeezing. And then bring your hips down, take a little shimmy. And if you do have a block, grab it. Take a little shimmy side to side with the hips. And you're gonna place the block in between the knees, so not right on the knee joint, just underneath, in between the knees, long ways. So the block is wide, then soles of the feet are gonna to come together. We are gonna try and work. <laughs> so bring your feet together, squeeze the block. Now, we want to find the muscles that are right in front of the hip bone, right in underneath the hip bone, really deep. So, press your shoulders into the ground, press your rib cage into the ground. See if you can find some of those deep core muscles, not the six pack, the ones underneath. Really fire up, squeeze the block, and take your hip, knees left and right. Little tiny movement while squeezing as hard as you can on the block. Once you start really connecting to I was this, gonna say, I didn't feel anything, but I definitely can you feel do. it now? <laughs> It takes a second for you to find the muscles we're working with. At first I was like, you're crazy, and now <laughs> so it takes a second. It hurts. Feel them. So these are some stabilizer muscles. Think about what the movement you're making. So the movement you are making is that left-right sway. These are stabilizer muscles, and look at how tired they are and how quickly they start saying, hey, I don't do much work. So these are important muscles to work. Squeeze the block a little more, challenge yourself. Sometimes working the opposite side of where we're tight. So if you're tight in the back of your legs or tight in the glutes, sometimes working some of these other stabilizer muscles can help loosen up the other side because they're not doing so much work. Do a little more, watch for holding your breath. You can do it. And then bring your knees in, release the block. Give yourself a little hug and complain if you want. <laughs> Take your legs up to the ceiling. Look at your feet and spread the feet wide. And then take some ankle circles. 
Reverse your circles nice and slow. The circles are not just rolling around in the joint. We're trying to feel and wake up all the muscles of the feet. And then we're going to press <coughs> our hips down into the ground. So you use the muscles of your stomach to press your hips into the ground. Send the heels up to the ceiling and notice what seems to be talking. Maybe you're super open in the back of your legs and your glutes and nothing feels tight. You don't feel anything. Maybe you start to feel low back. Maybe you're feeling glutes. Hold here. We're slowly going to turn the toes inward and hold. So turn the toes inward and hold here and then pulse the big toes towards each other. Little pulses. You should start to feel muscles right in by. I don't think I can do that. Huh? <laughs> the left one doesn't move. <laughs> Notice left and right side discrepancies. Turn the feet <laughs> all the way out. So now you're still pressing the heels to the words of the ceiling. You want to be nice and long in your legs. Super stable in the hips. And if you're not stable in the hips, put your hands here to help remind you. And then we're going to take our little toes out. Little pulses. Are we moving the feet or the legs? Just the feet. But they don't move. No, it's just a teeny tiny pulse to engage the outer stabilizers. <laughs> You're moving. I can see it. <laughs> I think I'm moving down and up, not left and right. So find those little... There's a lot of motion that's supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Nobody knew this was going to be a comedy show today. <laughs> And Kaylee is content with being completely confused. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. give yourself a hug. Now we're going to roll on over to a side and come to a tabletop position. Feet don't move, move and breathe in your tabletop. So inhale, tabletop. Exhale towards a child's pose shape. Connecting with your breath. Connecting to what is present today. So if you practice with us often, we make this movement often. Sometimes familiar patterns help us really get to know what's different day to day. So we might notice a wrist that's achy a little sooner because we're doing familiar movements. Get to know our body patterns and get to know what's talking to us before it's problematic. So really checking in, feeling your body, feeling what is present as you move with your breath. Inhale forward, exhale back. And then bring it up to a tabletop, make a nice solid base. So not buckling in the shoulders, pull up out of the ground, nice and engaged through the chest. And take the right leg out, even with the hips. And watch for your buckling in your back, stay stable in your base. Maybe take your hands a little wider to help you stay stable. Hold the leg really long, press the heel away from you, take the toes turned all the way in and all the way out. So you're just moving the toes, trying to keep everything else really stable. How do you move your toes so far? Because <laughs> I practice. <laughs> Are you moving the foot? Yes. The foot does not move that far. <laughs> so we're moving the whole foot using the toes as a guide, but trying to keep the legs still. <laughs> this is how far mine goes. What? You can't turn it in? There you can. <laughs> so we're going to allow the the big bone in your thigh to move. Oh, I am? Yes. You just want your hips stable. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think you're not, yeah. You want your hips stable, but the whole leg engaged. 
<laughs> you're gonna take your leg, posture right. Inhale here, exhale, slowly squeeze the heel towards the right shoulder. Inhale, open, exhale, squeeze. And you can take some movement through the spine, through the torso here, as long as you're keeping stable. So you're engaged in the torso. We're not just kind of free floating. We're trying to find the muscles of the leg. Which leg do you use when you do these? What? Which leg muscles do you feel when you do these? Oh, which obviously the right. <laughs> and then take the toes down. Press through the heel. You can keep it static or little pulses. So think about pulling from the calf muscle. Rather than pushing the heel down to the ground, think about pulling the leg longer from the muscle group. Breathe. Which I muscles I do I use? Left leg. Which muscles do I use when I pull the leg towards the uh, arm? I All the I obliques. I feel those in my legs. <laughs> yeah, you feel them in your oblique. Yeah. Because your leg is heavy. It's kind of a whole body. Exercise. Yeah, I usually feel more of my obliques than my mm -hmm. leg. Lower the right leg. Take a little side sway. Left leg out even. Solid base first. So really lift up out of the ground. Maybe this time change your wrist and shoulders. So change how you're shaped so your shoulders are getting a little bit different workout. Hold the leg and then turn the toes all the way over to the right. And then all the way over to the left. Trying to keep the leg high and even and engaged, but you're moving the leg within the hip socket. So this is what, we're not moving the hip around and taking this into the sacrum. We're holding the leg, holding the torso steady, and letting the leg move around in the hip socket. Breathe as you move. Try to keep the legs super engaged. You want a nice, long, strong leg. And then take the leg right past the right leg. Hold it here, inhale here. Exhale, slowly squeeze the heel towards the right. Left hand. If this is too intense, you can bring a bend into the knee. Breathe. If you want to start to feel it in the right glute, you're going to imagine you're pushing down through the right knee. Activate the glute to keep you stable. And then bring the left leg down, toes down, press through the heel. So take it static or little pulses, really thinking about pulling the leg long from the calf muscle. down. Slowly make your way to a down dog and warm up your down dog in whatever way feels right for you. My legs are really tight today. Find your breath. And we are going to use down dog to work with the back of our legs. So, <clears throat> oftentimes down dog, people think all of the focus is about pulling your heels to the ground. And that can be one of the focuses, but it's not the whole point of the pose. Today, we're going to make it more of the point of the pose. So we're going to take our hands and bring them a little closer to our legs than they were normally. And we're going to try and get our arms and shoulders comfortable because we're going to be focusing on our legs. So you want to find a point <clears throat> where you're holding, you're strong, there's no wobbling and buckling through the shoulders. And you can hold this nice and steady. You're going to bend the knees a lot and let your stomach come towards your thighs. So bend your knees a lot. Let your stomach come towards the thighs. 
really soft in the neck, make sure there's no tension there, and then slowly pull from the calf muscles, send the heels back down towards the ground. Bend the knees, bring them in towards the chest. <clears throat> slowly pull down towards the ground. So move with your breath. Move slow, focus on the muscles and the backs of the legs. And then step your feet a little bit wider, maybe about mat width apart. And same thing, bend the knees, send the heels towards the ground. Bend the knees, send the heels towards the ground, nice and slow. <clears throat> And then look towards the hands. Take a hop or jump all the way forward. Forward fold. So, forward fold. Find the back of your legs. So, when you're forward folding, <coughs> let your stomach come towards your thighs, wherever that is for you. So maybe your knees need to be super bent first to find your thighs, and then you can start to send your legs towards straight. Something to think about when we're trying to straighten our legs. If we lock the knees backwards, we lock energy movement through the legs. So we're less stable in the knee joint because we're locking the knee. So think about just a soft bend in the knee and think about lengthening behind the back of the knee. You can hold a block. If your low back is somewhat tight, you can bring your torso up a little. You can bring your torso up a lot and just focus on the back of the legs. Hang out here and notice what is present and start to feel your feet. So, really thinking about your toes. When you're working with the back of your legs, are you gripping the ground with your toes? Soften your toes. Roll the weight a little teeny bit around on your feet and see if you can get a little more even on your feet so you have even weight on the whole of your foot, not just one side or the other. And notice if you tend to be on the right side of the right foot more than you are on the left foot. Notice patterns in your feet. Hold here. And then if you do have a block, you're going to bring your hands to the block and start to lengthen the torso. We're going to start to work with pulling your heels up. So strengthening the feet can help lengthen the back of the leg. So one at a time, pull a heel up nice and slow. If you like, you can work with pulling both heels up and lowering the hips a little, really working with the legs nice and slow if your feet are already fairly strong. And then wherever you're at, bend the knees, take a deep inhale, rise all the way up, hands over head, prayer to heart with the exhale. Breathe and hold here. We're going to bring the weight onto the left leg and start to balance. So trying not to throw the hips left and right, we're going to bring the right leg forward, pointed toes. So right leg forward, hands can stay at prayer, they can stay on your hips if you like to find out where your hips are and keep an eye on them. <clears throat> We're going to start to lift this right leg, so lift and lower, trying to use the thigh, watching for compensation patterns, lift and lower. So try and really focus on the thigh and not be too tight across the lower back and the glute. Try to keep your balance in the midline. So imagine all those muscles really close to the spine. Imagine you're pulling them really tight towards the spine and getting taller up through the crown of the head. 
Bring your leg up to where you can comf comfortably hold in balance. Point and flex the foot. Point and flex. So press the ball of the foot away, curl the toes, and then push the heel away. Lengthen the back of the leg. Bend the knee, send the knee past the right. Slow, 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 and with control, send the toes away from you, not warrior three. So we wanna get really long, almost touching the toes to the ground, but floating. Breathe, hold, point and flex. Point and flex. Breathe. Slowly lower the toes, high lunge. Find a really steady base and check in on your lower back. We want nice soft lower back and maybe that means a big bend in your back leg. Find your steady base, both legs engaged. We're gonna bring the torso just a little bit more further forward to make a little more space. You're gonna send the heel towards the ground and then pull up knee in. Send heel towards the ground, pull knee in. So nice and slow, we don't want anything else moving. We wanna try and keep still as we can, just moving from the right hip down. If this is simple and easy and not too straining for you, maybe practicing coming straight to pyramid. So slowly straightening also the left leg. You want all of this movement to come in the legs. You're not wobbling left and right and taking it in the sacrum. Really strong and controlled and focused in the legs. Breathe. Land in a high lunge, regular high lunge. Solid base. Breathe. Slowly step forward as slow as you can. So pick up the right toes and then bring them forward slow. Land gentle, controlled. Find your mountain pose. Bring the weight onto the right leg. Slowly pick up the left, toes pointed. Find the top of the thigh, pull the leg up and down. So trying to keep all this movement in the top of the thigh, strengthening the top of the thigh, move with your breath. Hold where it's comfortable, point and flex. So where you are strong, focus. Straighten up the right leg, oh, sorry, bend the left leg. Slowly send it past the right. Point the toes really, really long, almost touching hold. Toes are almost touching the ground, get really, really, really long. Point and flex. Strong, try not to let anything else move. So really solid hips, really strong right leg. Balance. And then slowly lower into a high lunge, find a steady base. Maybe a softer bend in the back leg. And then we're gonna pull the heel down. Sorry, torso forward a little first. Pull the heel down. And then pull the knee forward. Pull the heel down. Pull the knee forward. Muscles in the legs remain engaged, not only when you're pressing down, but also when you're pulling the knee forward. So you find the muscles that make that movement happen. And then maybe you start to come to full pyramid. Straightening up the right leg also. Breathe. 
Find your steady high lunge. Weight onto the right leg as slowly and with control as possible. Come off the left toes and step forward. Find your mountain pose. Take the feet a little bit wider than the hips and turn the toes out. So we're gonna bend, soft bend in the knees. We're gonna put the weight into the heels and we're just gonna slowly turn the toes in and then turn the toes out. A little bit of movement in the legs. We're really focusing on opening up the legs as much as possible before we go into our standing split balancing. Maybe you're starting to bend the knees and bring the hips down a little. Make a full leg workout. And then take the toes out, land the weight on the balls of the foot, and we're gonna focus on pulling the heels in and the heels out. So heels in, heels out. My mat is so sticky, this is actually hard to do. <laughs> My feet are getting stuck on the mat. It is hard, hard to do it on the mat. <laughs> if I was doing it on the floor, I'd be better off. Bring it back, stand up nice and long. So we're gonna work full leg. Toes out, we're coming down all the way to Malasana. So inhale up, arms overhead. Exhale, sink the hips down, prayer down. Inhale, press through the heels, lift up. Exhale down, all the way down. Press. So you can make this tiny. You don't have to go all the way down to Malasana. Find where your yogi squat. Find the place where you're strong really engaged and you're not just hanging out in the joints. Inhale up, exhale lower. Inhale up, legs engaged, exhale lower. Bring it down, hold, nice and strong. options here so you can hang out here you can grab your block and bring a little of the weight off your legs we're going to work through the feet and legs here so we're going to peel one heel up at a time trying to move nothing but the leg so trying to keep the hips the back everything else stable moving through the leg Legs aren't strong enough for this. <laughs> and then maybe bringing both heels up, lowering the hips a little more, lowering the heels. So pull the hips down. This lower I can the do it one at a time. No. <laughs> <laughs> so don't flop through the joints. We're moving with our muscles, nice and strong, slow and controlled. We're not using momentum. We're not using gravity. We're using our muscles. Strengthen your legs. Lower the heels, bring the feet in, give your legs a little shake, a little wiggle out. Loosen and soften, try and get those muscles to really reset. If you struggle with loosening, bring one leg up and shake it behind you. And then bring the other one up, shake it behind you. Bring it down. And the tightest shake I've ever seen. What? My shake was like the tightest shake ever. Exhale, <laughs> so prayer to heart, mountain pose, hold, mountain. Reset, find your center. We're going through into our splits, standing splits. So be content with the journey. Be content with where your body's at. You may want to have a block forward to help you. We're not going straight into standing split and hold. We're gonna move through challenging our balance. So, went onto the left leg. Right leg goes back, 
toes down. So we're going to start with that nice long right leg. Toes down, push through the heel. Lengthen the right leg, lengthen, 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 and then get taller in the torso. So forward with the torso, longer in the torso. Engage. Slowly peel the right heel up. Peeling the right heel up, staying long, and you're going to tip like a pendulum. Pendulum. Tip. <laughs> tip forward. <laughs> Maybe finding your block. Still engage with the right leg. And we're not coming forward any further. We're going to lower and tip. Lower and tip. And we're going to try and stay as engaged as we possibly can. You should be feeling this in the left glute really strong. Lower and tip. And then come all the way forward, standing split. So, find your block, pull that right leg up, find where you're at. Maybe your torso is long and you can pull the leg longer. Maybe you can forward fold all the way down. If you'd like, you can challenge your balance by bringing right hand to right calf, and then maybe even left hand to left calf. <laughs> right? To left calf. <laughs> Uh, left and right challenge. Yes, left hand to your calf, right hand to your calf. The one that you're standing on. It's hard to balance and cue at the same time. I know. <laughs> and the block is like right under my head when I'm talking. So pull, pull the right heel up. Pull, 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 nice and long and active. While you're up here, if you're not just hanging out and happy, maybe playing with pulling the toes in and out on the right leg. Oh no, not that again. <laughs> and then point and flex the foot. Breathe while you're upside down. And then lower the right leg. We're gonna bend the knees. And hang out. Forward fold. Inhale all the way up, mountain pose, hands overhead. Exhale, part of heart. Take the left top of your wrist and walk the glute. Take circles, get some wobbles. You want that shake in the muscle group. And then connect with your breath. Inhale up. Exhale, part of heart. Find your mountain pose. Take a moment to notice. <clears throat> What happened on your left side? Notice how your left side feels. Notice any differences left or right. And then prepare to have an experience on the right side. Letting go of what it should look like or should feel like. And just having an experience within your own body shape your own holding patterns. And remembering that a lot of shapes are not necessarily restricted by only flexibility. Sometimes we're also restricted by your bone shape. So starting to get to know yourself so well that you get to know what you might be able to open more and what just isn't working for you. So we're gonna bring the weight onto the right leg. And send the left toes back, leg really long first. So get really long, point through the big toe. <clears throat> point through the heel. So really strong in the heel. Torso starting to come forward. Spine is really, really long. Really stable on the right leg. And we're gonna lift left leg up and tilt forward. And then lower. Nice and slow, 
with control. We want this movement to be going forward and back, not all kinds of wobbles left and right. You wanna use your muscles to keep you nice and strong. How do you keep your body stable? How do you keep this movement out of your sacrum and in your legs? Nice and strong and long. And then slowly tilt, tilt, tilt all the way up. Maybe you find your block first. Pulling the left heel up, 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 up until your torso has no choice but to tilt forward. And then maybe playing with your balance. Letting the tension come out of your neck. And maybe you just wanna play with your balance. Maybe you just want a static hold where you can play with bringing the toes on the left foot out and in, out and in. And then point and flex the foot. <clears throat> Pull the heel a little more up. Breathe, maybe get a little closer to full standing split. And then slowly bring the left leg down, bend both knees. Hang out, forward fold. Inhale all the way up. Prayer overhead. Right hand to the glute. Whack it, get some wobbles. Move, get some circulation in the muscles. Connect to your breath, inhale up. Exhale, prayer to heart. Inhale up. Prayer to heart and hold. Notice how the legs feel. Notice what feels different than when we started. We're gonna bring the left leg forward to start to balance on the right. Watch the hips. So bring the left leg forward. Maybe you bend the knee and pull the knee up. Maybe you're trying to lengthen the leg and pull the leg up. See if you can pull the heel up, 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 up. See if you can pull the heel open without moving the hips and moving the leg. Use the right hand to counterbalance, hold. Bring it back in. Cross over, right knee, ankle just above. Right knee, and then sink the hips. Woof, and balance. Don't look at her. Balance, 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 sink the hips, longer in the spine. Active legs, left leg active, left foot active, pull the left knee to the ground with the muscles long in this torso. Breathe. Hold here or challenge yourself. We're going to bring right shoulder towards whew, that left knee and back. Squeeze and back. We're moving above the rib cage. Challenge your balance. Bring back to neutral and unravel as slow as you can. Step the left foot down and tap out the right. <laughs> Set up for the other side. So left leg balances, right leg forward. Watching the hips, pull the right leg up. Hold. So you can pull it up a little higher, higher, higher. Pull it out to the right without moving the hips. So you use the inner thigh. Balance, breathe, back in, ankle over knee, pull the knee down, lengthen the spine, active right foot, active knee, then sink, so not sink, pull yourself down actively, you're not hanging out in any joints, muscles are all active and strong. 
challenge your balance this time left shoulder comes towards the right knee so try not to move the hips inhale to neutral exhale twist Don't look at Kelly. <laughs> Find something that's not moving to look at to help you focus. Back to neutral. Slow as you can unravel. Slow with control. Well, not me. Not today. <laughs> Tap out both feet. And then we're gonna inhale up and swan dive it down. Touch the ground and step back into down dog and hang out in a down dog for a minute. Really taking a moment to notice how you feel. So what feels different in your down dog? Maybe the backs of your legs feel a little longer. Maybe they feel a little tighter because they're tired. Notice. Breathe. Slowly bring your knees down. Inhale, come to a seat. And we're gonna curl up in a little ball. So knees down, knees up, feet down. Curl up. So hold your legs and then get really long in the spine. So really opening your shoulders. So locking your arms, opening your shoulders. And you can push your sternum back and round and then pull your sternum up. So really thinking about Moving through upper back. Nice and slow. And then with our shoulders locked, so nice and strong and solid, push the crown of your head up and then take your chin down towards your chest and take a really slow circle with your neck. Seeing if you can find any points of tension that you can release. Back in the opposite direction. And slowly come on down to your back. So land on your back, knees in towards the chest first. <clears throat> you're going to hold just under your knees and you're going to let your knees come in big wide circles. So apart and then back towards each other. Just kind of using your hands to help stabilize. Feeling your legs move in the hip socket. Reverse the circles. Land the right foot down, knee up. Take left foot down, knee up. Right foot, look at it. We're gonna bend the knee. We want the knee about right above the hip socket. So almost a 90 de degree angle. Bend the knee, bring the heel in towards the nose. So bringing the heel in towards the nose, hold it here. And then we're gonna take the knee, so now lock the thigh, take the heel out to the right. So pulling the ankle in and then out. What's supposed to knock? Is it, the, is it the leg and the hip or the... Don't don't move the hip on the ground. So the leg can move within okay. the hip, but don't... Watch for this. Awesome. Hips grounded. No snake hips. Yeah, no snake hips. We're trying... So what you're really focusing on is those stabilizer muscles. So when you have your knee bent and you pull your heel out to the outside of the body, not towards midline, towards the outside, this shouldn't go very far. And these muscles are the ones that we're connecting to. We're just trying to pull out and then pull back in. Just trying to find and connect to these muscles on the outside of the leg. Stabilizer muscles. So sometimes when we're super tight in the back of the leg or maybe somewhere else in the leg, some of these muscles being stronger can help loosen up because some other muscles may be feeling they're doing too much burden because they're, the stabilizer muscles are not strong enough. So bring the right foot down, take a little shuffle. 
and set up the left side. So knee just above the hip, hips nice and stable and grounded. I like to keep my hands on my hips because I do have a tendency to take my movement into my sacrum and let my hips move around a little too much. So I hold my hands here just so I know where they are and what they're doing. I can keep an eye on them. Pull the heel out, 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 and then in towards midline. Trying to really find and locate all those stabilizer muscles in the leg. When I pull my heel out to the outside, I have a tendency to want to roll this hip in and lift the left hip up so I can get more movement. But keep the hip stable, move the leg. Breathe. And then bring the right foot down, take a little side sway of the knees and hips. All the hard work is done. Take the heels down, little soft bend in the knees, point the toes. So imagine trying to pull your big toe all the way down to the ground, really find the front of the foot. Breathe, send the arms up overhead and maybe get a little bit longer. Reach from fingertips to toes. Open up. Take a couple of deep breaths in and exhale, sigh out of the mouth. This time, sigh out of the mouth and let everything soften. Notice how your body's landed. So check in on the shoulders, give them a wiggle. See if they're soft. Check in on the neck, give it a wiggle. Give your head a little soft sway, see if your neck is soft. And then wiggle your feet and your legs a little. Check in on your lower back, your legs, your hips. Some soft jiggles left and right, some soft jiggles up and down, really checking for holding patterns. So particularly check in around common holding patterns that you know you have. Maybe you notice left or right side is tighter than the other. Maybe when you landed, and here's an interesting holding pattern to find, when you land, if one foot really points over to the one side instead of neutral, or maybe they point in instead of kind of neutral. Notice this, Notice this is holding patterns. These are muscles. When you suddenly release and you can find your holding patterns, notice this. And it's not that we're trying to reset it, it's just that we're trying to tell our brain where our holding patterns might be so that our body's natural intuition can start to work and reset it. So take some wiggles, see if you can get softer, 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 looser. Start to really connect with softening into the ground and then make a decision about where you want to be for your final resting pose. So if you're laying here like this in a corpse pose and this feels like where you want to stop right now, then go ahead. But if this doesn't feel right for you, especially if it feels like it's pulling on your low back or in the backs of your legs, prop up, find support, find ways to get comfortable. A resting pose is about getting as close to being a corpse as possible. That means 100% soft. No gripping, no holding, no controlling. As soft as possible. So maybe you imagine someone picked up your legs and gave you a good shake. <laughs> you shook me and then I got tight. <laughs> Maybe you can let someone soften and shake you. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so, Kaylee knows and is aware of many of her issues. <laughs> One of them is letting us, someone else be in control. <laughs> well. <laughs> so starting to really soften into the ground. Loosen, let go of control of even the breath. 
and let it go of control of the thoughts. So contentment with what is present. Maybe you noticed some places that were tight today. Maybe you noticed some places that are more open than you realized. Really just starting to connect in and be content with what is present. Be content with where you're at on your own journey. And then practice of contentment is not so much washing our mind free of worry or never having a sad or distressing emotion ever again. Practice of contentment is to look for things that we can be content with even when the world feels like it's falling, falling apart. So it's making space for allowing all those opposites to be possible in our space. <clears throat> it begins with some of the other practices from the Yama. So it begins with non-grasping, non-attachment. All of these things will help us be content. But being content is also not completely washing ourselves free of unhappy emotions and thoughts or completely controlling our mind. It's learning to be comfortable with what is, almost as if it's all about comfort. So all of these guidelines were written to help us have a more comfortable, more smoothly running human experience. So when you look in and you try to apply these in your own life, we look for ways that they work for us. We don't have to do it exactly how it works for someone else. We don't have to apply a bunch of rules and scenarios that work exactly for someone else. We just look for ways that we can make a more comfortable human existence from the teachings. What can you take from the teachings so that you are more comfortable and more content in this existence? So imagine you could look at your thoughts Maybe you give them a visual. Maybe you can imagine that the back of your eyes is like a movie screen and your thoughts are just floating by like a movie. And you're sitting back, back towards the back of your skull and your feet are up, your little miniature version of yourself. You're lounging on a com comfy couch and you're looking up at the movie screen and it's far away. And it's just interesting. Maybe it's a scary movie. Maybe it's a funny movie. Maybe it's a little of both. And they're all moving, flowing, just like a movie screen. And this little miniature version of yourself is just to intend to watch the thoughts go by. You're not jumping off off your couch and trying to rewrite the story. You're jumping off the couch and interacting with the movie. And the movie is already written. The thoughts are already there. Sit back, watch them go by. And when you notice that 
you have been pulled into the story and you have trailed away and that you're no longer just watching them but you're somewhere caught up in some familiar pattern or worry just gently pull back to the visual of watching them go by like a movie screen And maybe you've had movie experiences, maybe you've been to a drive-in movie where you've heard the crickets chirping and the weather was wonderful and you had a wonderful experience. If you can bring this to mind, help your experience be a little more comforting, help your visual be a little more solid. And if you have the time to take, spending time in this practice, gently practicing, being a little distance from the thoughts, watching them flow by, and finding peace and contentment and just letting them float. Please take all the time that you need practicing this practice. If you need to finish up at 60 minutes, we are at that mark. So you can begin to bring some gentle movements to the fingers and the toes. Slowly bring awareness back to the physical body. And then curl up in a little ball in a fetal position or whatever side is calling to you. Taking a moment to land back in the room, back in this moment in time. I'm thinking about that concept of contentment spreading throughout your physical form. And as you come to a seated position, imagine this sensation of contentment makes you feel a little bit lighter, a little bit softer. May your hands to heart space connect to your inner wisdom, honor your inner wisdom, and then send out some kindness and contentment out into your world. May all beings be peaceful and at ease. Thank you so much for joining us.